But man, it gets me excited about Peel SQL in 21C because... Well, the big news that came out shortly ago was the fact that 21C is now available both in paid and free editions on our cloud. Lots of goodies in there. The reason I put a 21 slide in here up there is so I could say, you probably shouldn't be moving to it. I've dwelled on this many times in the past, so I'll just redirect you to this slide. Be aware that for learning new features, picking up new techniques, new tools, seeing what's coming, 21C is definitely a go-to release for you to have a look. But for production systems, big, serious corporate production systems, you probably want to still be on 19C. If you're not on 19C, that's where you want to be jumping to because you have those huge support windows. We offer two things. We have releases where you can get a, take a technical advantage. You have a certain competitive edge of getting brand new features such as the things you'll see in 21C. But if you're one of those places, like most people are, that you upgrade rarely because we know it costs money to upgrade, it costs testing and regressing, etc. Keep saying 19C is where you want to be. Night 21C is just that glimpse of the future, and we'll be going 19. And the next big long-term release would be long-term support release would be 23. Let's look at 21C Peel SQL stuff. Really just a repeat of some stuff I put on a blog post showing you some of the cool stuff that's coming in 21C, in particular around the concept of loops and collections and the like. So let me just flick to a SQL Plus window. That's the right one. What did I call the demo? Hopefully you can see that. So just to fly through some of the things we currently do and some of the luxuries that we will inherit when we move to 21C. If you want to jump through various different levels of iteration, like from 1 to 10, 100 to 110, 200 to 210, 19C, you write three loops and it runs and spits out the numbers you wanted. In 21C, you can now put them all on the single loop line. I want to go from 1 to 10, then from 100 to 110, then to 200 and 210 ad infinitum. It just goes in one loop and it just works in the same way. So a lot of these things are what I call syntactical convenience. They're not brand new features in terms of changing the way loops fundamentally work. But let's be honest, syntactical convenience means smaller code, tighter code, easier to maintain code. If you wanted to do a step function, which it's funny, like I learned my languages first with basic as a child. And even way back then, basic had a step function in loops where you could jump by a certain amount. Pill SQL, if you wanted to jump by three, you would, you would loop from one to 20 by one, but then you would do something every time the modulo of three equals some value. That's how you had to do it. And you get one, four, seven, 10, 13, et cetera. In 21C and beyond, lovely, by three. By anything you want. Effectively, now you can jump the iterations through the, what we call this one here is we call the iterand, the thing that actually goes, gets incremented as we loop. One of the nice cool things is it doesn't have to be an integer anymore. So this one looks like it's broken, but bear with me. I'm saying go from one to 10, but by increments of 0 0.5. Now it looks like it's broken. It looks like it did the old style thing of just going up by one. Let's not forget what's the default data type for an iterand. It's an integer. So we started at 0 0.5, which rounds to 1. Then we went to 1.5, which rounds to 2, and so forth. So it looks like this. But in 21C and beyond, you can do this. Let me scroll up a bit. I can say for i and then declare the kind of numeric data type it is. So I'm saying i is actually a number 3 with a one decimal place. I'd like that to go up by 0.5. Because it can now hold a decimal place, it can. So we can bounce by decimal places now as well. In 21C, the iterand still has to be numeric as of this release. I've heard on the grapevine there is talk of being able to things like iterate through dates and even iterate through strings, for example, searching for patterns in strings in a potential future release, say Farber, etc. But at the moment, still, you have this now extra control over the numeric part of the iterand. In 19C and before, if you wanted to instantiate a collection, you either loop through the elements you wanted, or we invented this one in 19C, which is you nominate the index and the value. So that's a nice shorthand of the pre of what this used to be, but it's still a fairly verbose syntax. In 21C, you can simply say, here's the values, and by default, they'll just go index one, two, three, four. Notice that this is not instantiating a nested table, which you can do like this. This is actually a associative array. So all those 
nice little instantiation facilities you could do with nested tables, you now just get straight out of the box with 21C. The days of copying elements from one to another. For example, here I've instantiated an array in 19C for elements 1 to 10. If I just want all the even elements, I would have to do something like this. Once again, the modulo, looking for every second index, and this in the end is then just looping through them to actually print them out. So you can see one didn't get instantiated, two does exist, three didn't, and so forth. So that's how you sparsely populate an array in 19C. In 21C, the for loop can go inside the assignment. How nice is that? I want S2 to be for I in 2 to 10, stepping by 2, taking the elements from S1. And the rest is just the facility just to print it out as before. So yeah, same result, nice tight syntax. In 19 scene before, if I've got something which is a sparse array and I want to loop through it, I sort of would jump to the first index and then sort of do this thing of, if the index is not null, then yes, it exists. So I'd simply loop through and then do a next. Not anymore. And that's the result. In 21C, I can say for IDX in indices of. That used to be available for sparse, I think sparse arrays, which were indexed by varchar2. Now it's just across the board for indices and I get them. I don't have to just use the indices. I can now say also for the values. So rather than printing out the indices, I can actually print out the values inside those indices. Or I can do both. I can have for X and Y, I nominate two iterands for the pairs. So index two contain value 20, index four contain value 40, etc. Very, very cool. Just really nice, convenient stuff. If you wanted to do things where the iterand changed in 19C, you couldn't. So if I wanted to go from I from zero to 10, but really wanted to use the power of two of I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't actually, I had to basically pick up with a different number. I had to calculate an expression. I'm interested in two to the power of I, not the value of I itself. And Bailey has come to join us early in office hours. Hello, Bailey. In 22, I can actually do it in the for loop itself. I'm saying, take this integer. It starts at one. I repeat timesing it by two until the power gets below some limit. This is much closer to your standard sort of looping constructs you have in C, C++, Java, etc., where you have, you know, starting value, increment value, and then a terminating condition. Very cool. You can do enormous things. For example, this one, I can say I can go from one to 10, increment by one while I is less than five. Then I go from six to 15, but by I divided by four, which will be the last value I had from the previous step etc. Incredible power. I don't know how you'd do this in 19C. You'd probably have to have some variable and do some very complex stuff. But now you have this total control over what you want the iterand to do and how it increments dynamically throughout the iterations themselves. And finally, just to quickly get finished off this one on 21 pill SQL is ref cursors. Ref cursors are great because for a lot of 3GL kind of languages like uh, C Sharp, Java, etc., the native sort of facility is you open a ref cursor, you give that back to the calling environment and it handles all the fetching and everything. So ref cursors have always been cool, but when you wanted to use them in Pill SQL, it was actually a little bit more complicated. You would sort of have to declare some records and they could be explicitly declared like this or have percent type, percent row type, and then you would fetch from the row cursor and then you would loop through what you fetch to get array processing, etc. And out comes the results querying the empt node from the employee table. In 21C, I have an externally open ref cursor, doesn't matter. I just go for R in values of the ref cursor, as if that ref cursor was an associative array. It handles the bulk fetching, etc. I just did R number because this cursor is only selecting one column, which is a number. If I'm selecting more things, like I'm selecting empno and ename, I simply declare a record type as I normally would, and I simply do for R of that type record in values of same thing it's effectively now doing a vector fetching fetching into a, a tuple as opposed to a single value super easy stuff it's just all of this stuff is syntactical convenience but man it gets me excited about peel sql and 21c because a it's nice and tight now tight really compact language less chances of making errors and also it's that nice proof that sort of slap in the face that people like going oh peel sql it's 30 years old you know it's a dead language no one ever does anything to it you can see we are actively building and improving the PLSQL language here in Oracle 21.